Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed Hero and this was, or not this was, this is Darkest Dungeon. So we got our, our first team of all men, and uh, that will be kind of interesting, because uh, I don't, least, like I said, I usually play as the female characters, because reasons. Um, and like I said before, the men characters are going to be pretty much just fodder. So their goal is just to survive long as long as possible to get me as many uh, heirlooms and funds to upgrade these places. Once these places are mostly upgraded, I can start doing more, um, you know, start achieving some of our goals and stuff like that. Anyway, let's go to embark. Also, we don't even have all our buildings yet. Now, something to note, every time you um, go on a mission on a location, you'll get more um, exploration in that area. The more exploration you get in that area, the more stuff gets unlocked. Um, essentially every three levels of exploration will unlock a boss. Well, sorry, they'll unlock a tier of bosses. Anyway, uh, we haven't unlocked any new locations, so we just got some missions to pick from. Um, I generally favor medium and long missions because they give you better loot and they give you a um, campfire, which you can work with. So that's going to be the plan. So I'm just seeing what my options are as far as... Um, Location, uh, positioning. Alright, we'll put you, you got your two front guys. I kind of want to drop Reynold. I really want to drop Reynold because he has Kleptomania. In fact, I kind of want to drop him right now. And bring someone else. So, tell you what, we'll bring Marissa. Again. You'll be in the front. Uh, what's your stuff looking like? Alright, and you have decent dodge. Max HP is 23, 25. You can use pretty much all of your moves from the back route. Okay. So we'll go with this team. Um, I would like to take Reynold, but he will steal stuff. He, we were lucky he didn't steal any stuff in, to begin with. Um, as for the rewards here, this is a leper only what, uh, item. Um, or we can go for this one here, which is a highwayman only item. Um, I'm going to go for um, the room battles. They can be killed, they can be beaten. I have to do all the room battles, which can be a variable length. If there happens to be only one room battle for some reason, um, that means all you have to do is take out that one room. All right, let's go ahead and do some provisions. This quest involves camping, and camping requires firewood. Firewood is given automatically to you on an appropriate quest. Camping gives heroes a chance to recuperate while in the dungeon. When you are wounded or stressed and wish to camp, right-click on the firewood in your inventory. All right, uh, we brought medicinal herbs and anti-venom. Anti-venom is because of the uh, plague doctor. The medicinal herbs is because of a leper. I'm going to bring eight torches, two shovels, two keys. Do I need any bandages? No. We do need a holy, we might need a holy water. And we're going to take about 16 food. I'm generally favored, making sure, it's better to have more food than you need than less. Because starving sucks. All right. And it's easy enough to drop food by just eating it if you need it. Alright, um... I feel like I need more shuffles, but I'm gonna go ahead and risk it. We'll see how things go. The fiends must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line. I've never seen hallways like that before. They're usually just straight lines. Alright, blight grenades. I blighted one of them. So, two damage, but does 19 stress. So yeah, they're not fun to deal with. Crit, nice. Back 
to the pit. Lepers don't even dodge, they're just like, whatever, I'll take it. Alright, go ahead and heal yourself. Also gives you a buff. Alright, next. Stunned and shuffled. Be gone, fiend. Alright, we're in good shape. Uh, go ahead and heal yourself again. Uh, d dots do stack, so now it's 8 damage per round and dead. Oh, perfect. Alright, so we did take a whole lot of stress, uh, but we'll be okay. Okay. So with this thing, I can actually use an anti-venom on it, I think. Nope, no anti-venom. What can I use on this? Well, I'll just use you, and nothing happens. Okay. Now here, I can do stuff. Um, you can either use a shuffle to break it open, or use a key. I'll use a key. There we go, bunch of money. Alright, looks like these hallways are actually longer. That's what they did. That's actually a little scary. Uh, one of the things you could have used on the alchemy lab, by the way, is you could use a torch on it, and it'll maximize your, your uh, light. But we were pretty close to max by that time anyway. Light grenades. Got those guys. Aim for the one in... Right there. Okay, that one's dead. Unfortunately, you're not very accurate. But you can take hits, sort of. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Ouch. Dead weight. You can do knockback and stun, but he resisted both. Oh, come on. Alright, I have to take you out. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Alright, go ahead and heal yourself. He's the only one he's the only guy that actually has healing, so better take advantage of what we got. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Okay, stunned, good. Heal yourself. Alright, so he's back to full. And he's double blighted, so he's dead. As the fiend falls, a faint hope. Book of Rage. Plus 25% damage if HP is below 33%. Uh, plus 5% crit if HP is below blah blah blah. So it's essentially if you're low on stats. You do more damage. Um, in here, if you use a holy water. Okay, I thought you could do something with this. Well, I just wasted that. Here, you open it. There's a table like on a wiki site or something, but unfortunately I don't have it, any of it memorized. Um, I have to check this room because I don't know if there's a encounter in that room down there. So we'll go this way. There's a trap up ahead. You have 80% chance to disarm. I had him do it just so he can get some stress relief.
Alright, what's down here? Yep, I have to go this way. Ooh. If you use a torch on this thing, you pretty much set your, your light to zero and you fight a super boss. If you beat him, you can get some pretty good stuff, but he's tough and we're in no condition to fight him. So I'm not going to do anything with him. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Spiders. All right. Not much to worry about here. I think they usually go first, which is a bit annoying, but continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. I'll get a shovel. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Now, also remember when you use uh, when you camp, your your torch will go back to 100 when you finish. All right, play grenades. Ah, oh, come on, man. Fortunately, lepers, like I said, they're not very accurate. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Ouch. Oh, a knockback. Not a big deal. Missed a stunned individual. Wow. Alright. Take it easy there, slugger. And you're bleeding. Oh god, bleed for everybody. Alright, he's dead next round. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Alright, well, this just gives bleed resistance, so I'll happily take that. Um, this provides stun uh, plus 20% to sk stun skill chance. Um, at the cost of dodge. I'll go ahead and take it on on um, Marissa, because she does have a stun skill. And we're going to swap you two back. And I don't remember what this thing could do. One way to find out. Oh, Alright, it's just decorative. I think if we had a holy water, we could have used on that, but I kind of wasted them, unfortunately. Alright. So not much we can do besides backtrack. We're going to take a whole lot of damage. Alright, leads have worn off, which is good. Uh, we might need a camp sand though. And monsters can respawn as well as traps. Be aware of that. Still have a lot of rooms to go through. Tell you what. You, search this. Oh no, you've been infected with blight. Alright, so... Before you die, let's uh, let's, camp. let's use a fire. A moment of respite, a chance to steel oneself against the coming horrors. 
Camping consists of two parts, meal phase and skill phase. During the meal phase, you choose how much they eat, which term determines the recovery. Make sure you have enough food. Skill phase allows you to spend rest points to on different hero, uh, hero skills used for recuperation. Uh, I'm going to use 8, so I get plus 25% HP and minus 10 stress to everybody. Alright. Now each character has their own set of skills. I'm going to go ahead and use leeches. Is it leeches or this one? It doesn't really matter, they're both the same. I'm going to use leeches on you. You get some health back and it removes the, the blight. Next. Quarantine, suffer 20% HP damage, but everyone gets reduced stress. No. Uh, self only, scouting uh, increase. Uh, bonuses against big monsters. Uh, bandit sense. Um, something else to note about camping is there's a chance you can get ambush. Um, so if I use bandit sense, it prevents that from happening. And also for the next four battles, we'll have a increased chance of surprise and less chance of us being surprised. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get bandit sense. So that'll keep that taken care of. Um, and then I'm also going to go ahead and clean guns. This is self only, plus 10 accuracy, 20% range damage, and um, plus 5 crit chance with range skills. So clean guns. And then I'm just going to go ahead and heal you. Alright, then let's rest. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. Alright. So that was okay, I guess. So we're about to hit our first combat here. Maggots. Maggots do um, nasty bites that do stun and they um, will stress you out like crazy. Disadvantage. Give okay, them one no down. Order. Two down. With impunity. <sighs> he has. I, I think he's hit once. Good. Th good news is we at least dodged most of it. Alright, that could have went a lot worse. A lot of times they don't have loot, though. Alright, there's a map in here, which will reveal a whole lot of stuff. That is a good map. That map revealed everything. So, there are three more rooms we have to do, at least. Which is not good. Alright. Surprise them, good. Play grenade you guys. Alright, killed the back row. Oh, uh, you're dead, that's good. Killed you. Alright, one's gonna get an attack off. Slowly, gently. This is and of course it goes after a roared. Play this safe. Some things to consider is buffing yourself and hope that you run into another can encounter before the buff wears off. They can be beaten. All right, we're just gonna open this with a key. Good stuff. Yeah, these uh five, five, five slot hallways are actually new. Um, usually they're only four, and that actually makes a big difference. 
Um, this thing I believe is safe. Um, but one way to find out. You now have plus 20% damage until next camp, which we're not going to be camping again, so... We're good to go on that front. Stun you. Good. Oh, come on. I have some food, but not much left. Take all. Ghoulish horrors. Brought low I'd... and driven into the mud. Yeah. All this, these, ex those little extra squares they added to the hallways. It's, uh, it's messed with my torch mounts. And we're down to, we don't have enough food now. Uh, another torch. So his thing triggered and forced him forced him to use it, which is fine because it was safe. Uh, down here we got some traps. I'm going to use him just to stay safe. And then um, after that, yep, torch is fading, I know. Laden with loot are often low on supplies. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is not safe unless you have holy water, and I don't have that. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use these last few torches. Okay, we got surprise. That's good. He's dead. You're next. Stop attacking him! Alright. I believe all of our buffs have worn off, unfortunately. Momentum. Push on to the task's end. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are... We're probably gonna lose these on the next battle. All right, last torch. We got this room and the room up ahead. We're out of torches, practically out of food. Okay, light them. Okay, he's dead. You're dead, wow. And you're dead. Only one attacker left. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Okay, I figured that was going to work. I think you need a key for this, but I'm going to use it anyway. It's trapped. And now you're blighted. Okay, whatever. Let's keep going. Here for that 80% chance. Your stress has actually went down quite a bit. Oh, shit. I was hoping not to get hunger again. Now we all got damaged and a lot of stress. Be met on an empty stomach. We just need to survive this last battle. That's it. There we go. 
go, that helps with a little bit of the stress. Okay, you're dead. Alright. We pulled through. And we get some disease resistance. Continue exploring. Precipitates a dizzying fall. All right, you're gonna search it because you're curious. Grab everything. Um, just take that. I'm equipping the gear just so I can free up some slots. Here's the super risky part. How good you did it. Okay, and then we're just gonna go in here. It's empty. We already know that. I'm just going for that last little point of interest. Ah, uh, triggered. I knew it. And you're at death's door. Which stresses you like crazy. When a, when a hero is re reduced to zero HP, they are at death's door. While in the state, they will suffer stat penalties. Plus, any further damage has a chance to kill them. Heal them uh, to get them get off death's door. that. Oh, it's one of these. Yeah, you visit it. Ha! Huh. 20 more stress. Alright, good. Glad I visited the does. Alright, we're just gonna go out of here. More bones return to rest. Devils remanded to their abyss. We did get quite a bit of stuff, which is good, but obviously those guys are kind of on their last legs now. Light sensitive, so now you do less damage when the torch is lit. Do more healing while camping, that's good. Uh, flawed release, so less crit on ranged attacks. And eat more food when stressed. Good. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Okay. First things first, let's see what we got in Stagecoach. Um, okay. We have the Antiquarian. That can't meditate and will only flag uh, flagellate. That's fine, I don't care. And does extra damage against humans and takes less stress from humans. And... Yeah, we'll take her. She searches where others will not go. And sees what others will not see. Plus speed and dodge on the first round. We grip. And here we got God fearing. We'll only pray. As judgment, we will happily take that. Uh, A sister of battle, pious and unrelenting. I wouldn't mind getting a Hellion, but she has freaking. She's a melee class and has reduced crit. I don't want that. Alright. The bellows blast once again. The forge stands ready to make weapons of war. Alright, so this is the blacksmith. Um, you can upgrade your gear here. It's very expensive to upgrade your gear at the start. Um, so what I'm actually going to be doing... Um, the way it works is you can upgrade your gear based off how many ranks of weapon smithing and armor smithing you have. And as you increase, it'll increase like your damage and all that stuff. Um, you can only upgrade your gear up to your equivalent level. So for example, I can only upgrade some of this stuff to level 1 at, at best. Um, and as you get you know more and more level ups, you'll eventually max at 5. Um, now what you can also do is you can upgrade the furnace and that will reduce all the upgrade costs by percentage if you max this out it reduces all the upgrades by half and that definitely saves you a lot of gold in the long run so the plan is I'm gonna be using a lot of fodder to kind of just get myself a bunch of upgrades to the furnace and some other locations that also reduce cost and then once it's ready to go um, I'll start actually having some teams that will develop as they go along so we're gonna go ahead and do some of these upgrades in a bit but first let's take a look at this other location make no mistake we will face ever greater threats. 
Our soldiers must be ready. Guild, um, the way this works is you can learn skills that you don't know yet, or you can upgrade skills you already have. Same restrictions, you can only upgrade up to based off your level, as well as you can only upgrade based off how much you've unlocked in this place. And just like in the um, Smith, you can reduce the cost for upgrading skills. So also what you can do is you can drag them over, and I'll tell you about the class. So you got the Crusader, Battle Hardened and Stalwart. The Crusader has held the front lines in the in a hundred holy wars. He either attacks a foes head on with Righteous Fury, or embraces a melee support role by leveraging his powerful defensive buffs and off heals. A Bounty Hunter, a brutally efficient single target executioner and crowd control specialist. For the Bounty Hunter, planning is key. Mark targets for bonus damage or look for opportunities to capitalize on a stone foe. He can also wreak havoc on an enemy uh, party's order using his grappling hook, flashbangs, and powerful uppercut. Leper, a ruined man, a warrior, and a poet. The leper is most effective when given a turn to focus himself before raising his massive blade. When he swings, it is all or nothing, crushing blows and massive damage or the empty whistling of a glancing blow. He is entirely self-sufficient, drawing strength from his life of trauma and able to channel it into heals, protection, or unrelenting fury. Highwayman, a rogue, a thug, and a thief. The Highwayman um, has honed his skills with Dirk and Flintlock uh, to devastating effect. Whether at range or in melee, he is equally effective at dispatching his foes. Be it a grape shot area of effect or single target bleed, the Highwayman's skill focus solely on dealing damage in a variety of ways. Vestal, the warrior nun channels her zeal for battle into healing abilities, uh, holy judgments and dazzling explosions of light, a strong backbone to any party. The Vestal can also hold her own on the front line like a powerful mace bash with a powerful mace bash and close quarters com uh, condemnations. Light Doctor, a doctor, a researcher, and alchemist who prefers to hang back, eating away at our foes with stacking damage over time abilities like toxic clouds and plague filled grenades. She's equally effective in a support role, blinding and confusing foes while enhancing a party's survival with damage increasing tonics and remedies for bleed and blight effects. The Antiquarian, a scholar, researcher, and keen archaeologist. The Antiquarian is not well suited for combat. She is, however, an expert in self-preservation by making herself scarce in a fight or demanding an ally protect her. She ensures her survival if direct combat is unavoidable. The Antiquarian can use her Fulmination Sensor to heal and invigorate allies and to toxify, toxify attackers. The not suited well for combat is kind of misleading because she's actually really good in combat. Now the thing is, a lot of her abilities are just like weaker versions of abilities that other classes have. Like for example, her uh, Flash Powder does very, just doesn't really do any damage and just does minor debuff. Her Blight only does like one damage per turn on base. Her Nervous Stab is very weak. Um, her healing spell it starts at one. <laughs> and her, a lot of her dodges don't really do much. But where she stands is this ability called Protect Me. What this does is it's a reverse guard ability. It forces a target to guard her. And she'll buff that target with uh, dodge and protection. So what you do with her most people will be like, hey, you should keep her in the back um, so she can, you know, stay out of trouble. What you do is you put her in second, first or second slot, and then you have her protect me the, uh, the other slot. And that, what will end up happening is she's protected from all attacks because the, um, the, the quote-unquote tank will be handling it. And she's essentially buffing that tank, which ensures all the attacks will be going to that target. And this thing stacks, so it's pretty good. Now, generally, the, f the reason why she's not good in combat, in the attention, is because what she's good at is she's actually really good at collecting stuff. If you take a Antiquarian with you on a uh, mission, your max stack of gold increases. Um, in the back, back in the day, it was only 1,500 gold per stack. Um, I think it increased to 1,600, it looks like. Um, the Antiquarian, at least back then, was like 20. It was like 2,000 per stack, which that means you get an additional 500 gold per stack, which means more gold you can carry. The other thing is she can find unique little sellable items that only she can find, and she generally can find them in pretty much every encounter and every um, point of interest. So even things like torches that usually have nothing, 
will usually have something that she can take. Even like battles where you usually never get anything, antiquarians will find something, and they'll be able to, and they generally can stack really high. So taking an antiquarian is great because it gets you a lot of funds, and for the most part, they're pretty decent at holding their own because they just make someone else protect her. All right. So anyway, with all that said and done, let's go ahead and do some upgrades. Um, do I want to do skills first or gear? We'll do gear first. Do they each use different things? Uh, yeah, they do. Every creature has a weakness. The wise hero trains for what she will face. All right. A strict regimen is paramount if one is to master the brutal arithmetic of combat. All right. As you can see, the requirements get higher and higher. Luckily, they use different stuff for each of them. Fan the flames, mold the metal. We are raising an army. All right. Now, also something you can do is you can actually hit this button here, and you can actually filter out some of this stuff if you want to. Um, so you can filter out these 32 busts for other items if you really, really need to. I'm not at that point yet, so I'm not going to do it just yet. But in any case, um, we got ourselves a pretty good team going here. Um, we did get a leper item, so I will go ahead and equip that. Oh, sorry, no, we got the highway highwayman item. Never mind. But the rest of that stuff is fine. Uh, who grabbed other stuff? You did. You have dodge. You don't have dodge. Just making sure I set my gear up for that. Alright, pull this up. You get that, and you get that. And you're a highwayman, right? Yep, you can actually use this. It's plus 8 dodge, plus 2 speed, but you lose accuracy with range skills, which kind of sucks. But it does give you more dodge. Alright. And we're going to go ahead and call this a video. Um, I'll name these characters off screen. And when we come back, we'll do more exploring. Uh, there's a few more locations we still haven't unlocked. We need the sanitarium, the nomad wagon, and then there's the survivalist over there. Um, also, something you might have not noticed is as you upgrade some of these locations, they actually start to look a little nicer. So you're kind of restoring this place little by little. Anyway, I am the Depressed Hero, and this was Darkest Dungeon. See you guys later.